what I'm on about! That's what I'm on about! How are we doing guys? Welcome to DT's Daily. Now on today's show we're going to take a look back at four matches last night. Two in the Champions League, two in the Premier League. Um, next piece of news involves Thierry Henry because reports are suggesting that he's going to take over as the new manager of Bournemouth. And the last piece of news involves Arsenal and Mikel Arteta has said that the criticism of Willian has been fair. I represent my fucking self. How are we doing guys? Welcome to DT's Daily. That's right. So the first place we're going to start on last night's games and we're going to start with the Premier League. Burnley against Fulham and it finished 1-1. And I feel that Burnley will be relatively happy with that, although they were the home side. And Fulham, they're not going to be too happy because right now, given the situation they're in, they need three points. And um, it's not really a great point for them. And the fact that they took the lead and then, you know, let that lead slip within the space of four minutes will be what's frustrating for the manager. Uh, next up, we have Everton against Manchester City and they just continue winning. They go on and on and on. And uh, Kevin De Bruyne is back in the side as well. He came on in this game quite late. Great, just in time for Arsenal at the weekend. <laughs> but Manchester City, this was their game in hand and they are flying well clear at the top of the Premier League. They will be the next champions. It's as simple as that. It's, um, you know, a case of when, not if. Um, and yeah, Everton, um, they played well, to be fair, um, but they run out of steam in the second half. Man City took the lead. Phil Foden um, equalised pretty quickly, Everton, and um, went in at half-time 1-1. But then, like I said, I think Everton started to fade in that second half. Um, and then Manchester City started to, you know, crank up the pressure. And then Riyad Mahrez, brilliant goal from him. And, um, yeah, it was a very um, comfortable evening, should we say, in the end for Manchester City. On what looked like a tricky game. But like I said, next time out, they've got Arsenal. And I'm looking at the, you know situation with Manchester City and all I can say is that you've won the Premier League now you got your Champions League games next week so rest all your players on Sunday you know take it easy just have a little rest on Sunday you know when you travel to the Emirates and get everyone prepared for your Champions League game because that's what's most important to you right now I'm hoping I'm praying um, <laughs> Pep can pull a favour for Arteta. <laughs> oh, mate, Man City look unreal. Um, going into the Champions League games, first of all, Sofia against Borussia Dortmund. This was a 3-2 win for Borussia Dortmund. Um, Haaland with a couple of goals when doesn't he score. Uh, brilliant performance as well from Sancho. He looked really good in this game. Um, but yeah, three away goals and, uh, you know, despite Sevilla getting a couple, Borussia Dortmund are well and truly in the driving seat. Um, Porto against Juventus and this was a 2-1 win to Porto. And I'll tell you something, it was a late goal from Juve that actually dug him out of this one and got that one away goal. And... Um, yeah, I think that they'll be quite happy with that because um, it wasn't a great performance. Porto scored within the first two minutes of the game and then scored within the first two minutes of the second half. The ideal times to kind of score in a game and probably the worst time to concede. Um, but yeah, they got that goal very, very late with around about six minutes to go. And that one goal could be crucial for them. Um and you never know, Cristiano Ronaldo, he's always got a habit of stepping up in those second leg ties when it's, you know, needed the most. And yeah, intriguingly poised, that's for sure. But uh, we'll wait and see what happens. Um, next piece of news that was breaking yesterday, it's quite an interesting story. And that's uh, former Arsenal striker Thierry Henry um, is the front runner for the vacant managerial post at Bournemouth. Um, of course, he was uh, manager at Monaco 
and he's currently manager of major league side CF Montreal. And I'll tell you something, this is a bit of a turn up for the books. And um, yeah, apparently all the stories are saying that he's the front runner. Um, it's between him and former Huddersfield manager David Wagner. Um, but apparently the owners really like Henri and they feel that he could be the man to turn things around. And a bit of a reunion with Jack Wilshere, um, who of course is at Bournemouth now. But um, yeah, I'd love to see Thierry come back, you know, to English football in some capacity. And, um, you know, there's always been that dream that one day in the distant future he would somehow be involved at Arsenal. I miss that fairy tale of Henri and Vieira and everything else. Um, but he's going to really have to prove himself um, given the managerial jobs that he's had, um, given the fact that he was at Monaco and that really didn't work out. Um, and then obviously at the moment with him being at Montreal, um, I believed, you know, in their last season, they lost 13 games, I think it was, or something along them lines. So he's really going to have to, you know, start picking things up on the managerial front. But um, no doubt in Thierry Henry's credentials. But um, as a manager, he's still got a lot to prove. But I would like to see him, you know, back in England. And Bournemouth, for me, would be a great club for him. And um, he would get the back in and um, he'd get the respect. So we'll wait and see whether Thierry Henry will be the new Bournemouth manager or not. Um, last piece of news involves Arsenal and uh, Mikel Arteta has been speaking about Willian. Um, and he has said that the criticism of the winger is not unfair. I'm going to repeat that. Not unfair. Now, I saw some snippets from his interview doing the rounds on social media. And the part that they clipped, and it's very obvious why, um, is this part that Mikel Arteta had said. He has said that the way he's training, the way he's working, the way he's willing to give everything to the team is what I demand. Whether he's more successful or less successful in the game is another matter. It will come with the quality that he has. Now, I see why they're using those you know, parts of his interview because automatically it makes people go, what's he seeing? What's going on? Actually read the full story because Mikel Arteta has made it very clear that the criticism of Willian is fair and it's justified. Um, he also goes on to say that the expectations of Willian and the goals he can score, the assists he can create, it's normal that people will write things about him. We have to protect him as much as we can. Now, I agree with that. You need to protect the players at the moment. We see so much about racial abuse and all kinds of different things going on on social media. And um, some of the abuse that I've seen thrown towards Willian, you know, even on a match day, it's not good. It's not good. Um, so, yeah, just don't listen to little snippets. Actually read the full story. He agrees that the criticism, you know, is fair. And um, he's not performing. He's not doing the things that he's done for many years in the Premier League and got assists and score goals and everything else. And it's not working. Um, but obviously, as manager, his job is to protect the players and that's what he's doing. But, you know, when you see all these quotes on social media, just have a look. Read the whole story before reacting. That's all I ask. So... Um, there we go. That is it for today's DT's Daily. Um, massive, massive game tonight. And um, we've got to get that win, haven't we? And um, yeah, hopefully the videos after will be of me smiling. Yeah, we'll wait and see. Um, if you know around it, make sure you hit the subscribe button, smash a like on this video, and I will see you a lot soon. I'm out of here.